Yeah, they need to make sure that. Are you actually going to read? Otherwise, yeah, are you actually going to read it? Really huh? see you're going to read it? Yeah. Oh my God, you're this. you're literally a redditor. You can't really do much to adapt Nothing. your co-op. Your, uh, your brother has had a couple of enigmas in this uh, in this tournament. They're 100 percent as well. Three picks out of the TR5 so far. Wait, you're saying we've had all of them, or they've won every game? No, no, you've won two with them. Yeah, Owie picked up the other one. Yeah, it's a three out of three. Really, really solid hero. All right, thank you very much. Uh, draft is done. We'll get into game two and we'll return to our commentary team. Tournament life on the line here. Virtus Pro need to walk away with a win in this game number two. I'm Capitalist. I'm joined by William Blitz Lee, the former mid player for Team Zephyr, who specializes in heroes such as Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit, and Storm Spirit. Luckily for Blitz, we have a Storm Spirit this game. You really do. It's almost as if they knew. They but did. he's going to be playing the Storm, and this is a kind of great Storm game. Like, he should do really well. I think I'm. This type of lineup when he has this much backup. I was gonna say something mean, but your your mom's here, so I can't really do that. <laughs> like I gotta thank you, no, mom. That wasn't one of those moments you guys go Owen. It was just meaning I was trying to be a nice guy for once. Thank you, mom. That was nothing insult. Protecting insult. Me why, from why, Blitz's flames. Why are people acting as if I flamed you? But talk about this storm spirit. I mean, it's really good with, in conjunction with the uh, Illidan. Sounds are right because you're when you're able to jump in you have this sort of freedom with global sounds going off at the same time when you initiate it gives you just this sort of fearless feeling feeling when you go in I think my two favorite heroes to play with when you do play storm is one is silencer uh, the other is bounty hunter mm -hmm. the bounty hunter is the hero that gives you the comeback gold and it's not in this game but uh, the silencer is so good just because you fear almost nothing even when BKBs are popped you know that the supports are typically going to be the heroes that zone you out or lock you down the most, right? Mm -hmm. And that's reflected in Secret's lineup. You've got Puppy, who's playing the Enigma, a pretty greedy support. You've got Kuro playing the Shadow Shaman, another greedy support. So what's the likelihood that either of them get a BKB? I mean, the Enigma at this point in time, like, item-wise, can he go straight for the BKB and leave Zai the he early mech? Probably should, but at the same time, it's still okay for the Storm to play against, because he right. can just play around that timing. Mm -hmm. It's really the Queen of Pain and what she decides to do that's going to determine a lot in this game. Like, if S4 decides to go for something like the Orchid first, it would be really good, but at the same time, like, I'm just thinking way ahead into the future. If S4 goes Orchid, then VP counters him by getting a Yules on their Lina and just blowing him up in every fight with Global Silence. Mm -hmm. So S4 probably has to go something like maybe the Sumail build, where he decides to go for the Yule Scepter early so he can continuously kite. All right, starting off our laning phase here, we've got God on the Storm Spirit facing up against S4's Queen of Pain, FNG, already going to lay some harassment down on the line. Our offlaner for VP is going to be DK Phobos playing the Earthshaker up against Team Secret's Kuro on the Shadow Shaman and Arteezy playing the Luna. Puppy's going to be in the jungle as the Enigma. And their offlaner is Zai, who's playing the Darkseer up against Illidan Silencer and Lil's signature Visage. We haven't seen too much Visage in the main event, but... You can't get much better Visage player than Lil. Yeah, I think it was Hanskin that said, if you look at Lil's Dota buff page, it's just Visage. <laughs> like, he's like the only person in the world besides AUI that enjoys playing Visage in pubs. Yeah, most people spam some sort of like mid hero such as Storm Spirit, but <laughs> Lil actually goes for you know a lot of support Visage for some reason. It's just a good hero. Yeah. It's one of the heroes that is, it's incredibly versatile. Um, it's just good against a lot of the heroes from Secret. It's almost going to be impossible for Puppy to hit the black hole if Lil is really good with the bats. And it's good against the Darkseer too because you can just slow his momentum. Like heroes that have instant escapes or abilities that need to cast, uh, it's incredibly good against. They're actually doing dual lanes right now. FNG has joined DK Phobos, probably because of the greediness of the Team Secret supports. As you said, like the Enigma's gonna be full-time jungling here, maybe rotates over for a gank or two, but most of the time is there. And then Shadow Shaman, uh, you know, in battling scenarios here in two versus two, three versus three, he's not particularly strong just because he is so squishy. No, he's kind of bad. It's not just because he's squishy, but the initiation range on the hero is so incredibly short. Right, uh, FNG, who he actually lands that one. G's going to get close enough to land an extra right click. He actually grabs a haste rune. He's going to try and get, do battle up against Kuro. He's trying to get to the safety of Puppy, but Puppy's like, not me, man. I don't want to be anywhere near that one. First blood does go to God. Yeah, the reason why Puppy can't help him there in that situation is because what are you going to do? You've got one level of... Midnight Pulse and two levels of Demonic Conversion. You right. don't even want to trade HP at that point. Just go back to your jungle, save time, but 
This is really going to help G in this mid lane. I think with the kill, uh, it definitely puts him a lot further ahead of S4 when it comes to farm. But when it comes to levels, S4 is going to hit the level 6 sooner. So what I'd really like to see from G is as soon as he hits level 5 and he's reasonably certain the Queen of Pain's a creep or two from hitting level 6, just rotate into the jungle. There's no reason to contest the lane at that point. She's just going to out-level you. That's the nature of the matchup. It's not worth it to uh, continue to contest. Now, Puppy, he does go for the early level of Midnight Pulse in order to better allow him to stack by clearing through trees, right? It allows you to very efficiently uh, stack up neutral camps and maybe even set things up for the Queen of Pain to join him later on and be a part of that experience. Yeah, and the Enigma, I mean, he's doing a really good job of farming right now. He's level 4, he's about to hit level 5. Uh, he's keeping up when it comes to farming levels. This is what you expect out of an Enigma. I think I ran into Puppy maybe 10 or 15 times in solo queue. Every single time it was the Enigma. Every single time he completely dominated the game and just led his team to a victory. And it was incredibly frustrating to play against him. Although this isn't a pub game, I mean, he's so good at finding the levels on the hero. Like, he's just done it so many times. Yeah. There is a mechanical uh, limit that you need to just play with to constantly push through. Yeah, a good timing for Enigma is hitting level 5 by the minute 4, and he already has it. Like, he's actually a good 30 seconds ahead of that. Kuro right now is actually trying to rotate into the middle lane right trying to get behind G and catch him out, but that's just not going to happen. S4 playing pretty aggressively. Meanwhile, FNG trying to push back Puppy away from that top rune, but with the backup of the Eidolons, he can't really challenge that jungler. Yeah, as soon as G or S4 gets this top rune, I think G just backs up and runs. Go to the jungle right now. You know, you're not certain where S4 is when it comes to his level 6 timing, but you know that it's soon, so I don't right. think it's worth it unless FNG just decides to sit in this mid lane. You also have the potential smoke being run out to Puppy as well. Uh, you know, as soon as he hits level 6, he's probably going to be looking for at least one gank to use that, uh, that ultimate. So I like the idea a lot of just sitting back, farming up your neutrals. Uh, bottom lane here, Zai, he's got the surge, so he should be fine here. They're going to get a lot of damage out from Lil's nuke. Oh, he didn't actually pop it in time. Seems like the nighttime vision cost Lil the opportunity there. Don't think it would have killed any anyway, as it was only level 1 soul assumption, but... Would have brought Zai close. Yeah, and if you notice that G's just abandoned this mid lane, he knows that uh, S4 is level 6 now. There's no reason to contest the lane. I think he learned off of that CTY Sumail matchup, where as soon as Sumail hits level 6, he just dives him. That's a really common thing to happen, and I think that was just CTY slipping up a little, but G's going to be smart about this, guarantee that he gets level 6, so that the Queen of Pain can't just dive him and punish him and get just that additional level on him. He's going to get level 6 with that. Just roll back to base. Oh, Kuro's been caught here. DK Phobos hits him with the Fissure, and they need another right click. Kuro saving his own life with the Shackles, but he'll die eventually. DK Phobos is the one to secure the last hit and will be able to get himself not only the Tranquil Boots, but also the Soul Ring's going to be coming in soon for him. This really speeds up the farming time of the Earthshaker. Yeah, now the Storm Spirit, this is the benefit. You go to the jungle, you TP top, you can bottle your offlaner once, and then they can dive Arteezy if he wants. They, he's not level 6 yet. They've got the Fissure available. They're just going to set this up real nicely. Yeah, the Chain Stun's easily going to overwhelm a squishy hero like Arteezy on that Luna. So free pickoff, things going quite well. Much better for Virtus Pro than they did in game number 1. Yeah, and G can just sit up here for a little bit. He can rotate to the jungle if he wants. Uh, there is an idol on just watching that top room because he wants to secure it for S4, but... Illidan chose not to go for global silence here at level 6, instead went for the extra uh, kill power of a level in Last Word, or maybe the Glaze of Wisdom, not sure which he leveled first. Why do you think that is? I mean, it would seem like, as the safe lane farmer, that global silence is still going to be critical for Storm Spirit when he goes for these ganks. I think it's just so that he has a little bit more lane control, but I think he should have at least gotten a level, because Puppy can just go for plays oh, like S4. this. Yeah, he's going to pop both the ultimates there. They will be able to pick up that quick kill on G's Storm Spirit. Well worth the double ults. Yeah, that slows down the momentum of the Storm Spirit so much, who has been relying on ganking to get farm, but still, VP's doing a really good job of keeping up with, uh, with rotations. Luna's one of those heroes that is incredibly weak in the laning phase, and I mean, Kuro's playing probably one of the weakest supports from that level 2 region to level 5. Or he, Zai, he has to dodge this Light Strike Array, will not be able to, and here comes the nukes. He gets popped real quick. Arteezy actually makes his rotation, he pops the ultimate, get but BP, here. they're going to stay grouped up together and try and fight up against Arteezy. The nukes are there, they get the kill, but S4, he has the double damage rune, gets the kill on Il Lil, and they get the stun. Three kills for S4.
Still, though, they picked up a kill on Zai as well as Arteezy's Luna. That's really going to set back that Luna quite a bit. It's not the worst thing in the world for VP. I think it was Matt who I was talking to yesterday, and he said, the thing about that's crazy about playing against the Queen of Pain is that you know you only have two or three seconds to Girl. start a gank, and then you're dead. Light Strike Ray lands on and the chain stuns, and again, there's not much he can do. In a two versus one sh scenario, Shackles doesn't do anything for you. Yeah, but S4, perfect rotations. That's that blink buff, you know? You TP to that bottom tier one tower, yeah. and you instantly come in every single time. It does so much damage. All right, six to four, eight minutes in right now. Rather even game, of course. Secret are going to be a bit ahead in experience because of Puppy, primarily. He's always able to get that extra amount of XP through jungling. He's already level 8. Build the wise, we'll see what he goes for, as we don't see the remnants of a mech on either one of Puppy or Zai. I think that you still go for a mech on... Oh, they actually just get another kill. Beautiful pickup. Managed to get the silencer. S4 backs himself up a bit low, but they're going to be fine. VP are just going to focus on this tier 1 tower in the top lane. They know it's going to be a trade-off. A little bit unfavorable for them, but still. It's got to be what they focus on, especially with FNG still not having his level 6. What's so dangerous right now is that G is going to run into this timing where he's just going to fall really far behind this Queen of Pain, and what she decides to build is going to dictate a lot of what he's going to decide to build. That's why he's going to hold on to his gold for a little bit at least. He'll probably still go for the Soul Ring no matter what he goes for, right. but after that point, he just has to kind of hold on um, and wait. And it does look like that S4 is going to go for the Orchid, which could backfire. It's an incredibly offensive item, but if you just get global, and the Lina gets a decent amount of farm, she can just blow you up instantly. As your judgment um, at this place, God, he's got a decent amount of farm net worth wise. He's actually second behind the Queen of Pain. Is this enough of a close gap for God to go for an Orchid of his own? No, I think that as soon as he sees S4 have the Oblivion Staff, he should get something like the Eules. Yeah. He's pretty far behind right now. If he rushes her for the Orchid, he's going to be probably three or four minutes behind. And they can't afford to just stay static on the map for three or four minutes without farming at all. And I just think it's more important for G to have that defensive capability in case he decides to go in. Especially for the late game when the Queen of Pain eventually gets something like a BKB, and you can't just rely on the Global Silence. Now, pushing down that bottom tower has actually opened the enemy jungle up to Team Secret. As you can see, Zai's utilizing that one quite efficiently. Uh, we also saw Puppy and S4 oh, coming in and taking some of it. Jump in, Fisher leading the way. Arteezy looks like he's going to be popped here. They use the Global Silence just to make sure God is going to be fine. S4 comes in, silenced up. G does have enough for TP out, and there is no stuns coming out from Team Secret. So free kill and a walk away from VP. Yeah, and that's huge because how often do we see Arteezy at 0, 3, and 3 right now? At this phase of the game, VP are finally one of the few teams to really just take it to him and contest that safe laner. Luna's a hero that's kind of similar to Gyrocopter, but at the same time, there's a lot of limitations. The hero relies on being able to 5-man group up, and he just doesn't have the farm to be able to do so. And Oh, this is going to be sick timing right now, because if S4 dies to this, this is going to slow him down so much. The gang comes in, they manage to get the Fisher just ahead of the jump, double drops, but still not enough. S4 manages to get the blink away. It felt like it was going to be a really tough, like VP had to combo that perfectly. The Fisher into both the familiars and the Echo Slam to follow it up, and that just didn't quite happen. Uh, Arteezy, he smoked up. He actually runs into FNG here. They know someone is around. Meanwhile, S4 still managed to pick up the kill there on the Visage. Going back to that bottom lane, though, the Laguna Blade getting put out on Zai. Brings him a little low. God has a lot of mana to jump for it and will start going for Arteezy, locking him down. Beautiful choice. They do not want to let Arteezy get off his ultimate. And that's a fourth death for Arteezy. And although S4 is snowballing really hard on this Queen of Pain, it's still a Queen of Pain. Like, one of the limitations of the heroes and what it makes it kind of poor is like your strong hero, which is getting a lot of farm, is that she still doesn't have a lot of HP. And if you feed a 5 and 0 spree to somebody like a Storm Spirit, all of a sudden they jump ahead of you. Right. So he has to be so careful about how he dives. And there's a lot of different heroes on the side of VP that can punish him. There's a Global Silence. DK Phobos is getting closer and closer to 
his blink dagger. She has to be really careful at this phase of the game. Despite what Kuro was doing there, he was actually stopping his wards from attacking the tier one tower with the catapult. It still brings it into the deny range and Illidan will deny that tower. Secret also got the top tower in the process. Illidan though, of course, was able to farm up those wards. Looks like he's gonna be farming up the rod of Atos, just like we saw from last game. It's looking more and more likely that she is just gonna go for the Bloodstone, but I would really just prefer him to go for even something like the Orchid or the Yule Scepter. Uh, he's just gonna notice that S4 has such a quick Orchid. It's, <laughs> all right, it's done at 13 minutes. That's actually sub 13 minute Orchid right now. And this is just gonna terrorize VP because there's very little that they can do to counter it. And she's gonna die right here. Yeah, they jump in, already slowing him down with the silence there. They should be able to pick up the kill, search run forward, and sure enough, the Orchid pops. And she does go down. So now that they see that Orchid, it's been revealed. You said there was very little options that VP have to deal with an Orchid at this timing. What is one of the things that they can do? They just kind of have to play the guessing game. Like, you okay. counter-initiate wherever S4 decides to go. Oh, Kuro. They needed a Fisher. There it is. DK Phobos finds it at the tail end of... He's actually going to get close to that Blink Dagger, which could be one of the ways they counter. Oh, S4 is going to kill... Yeah, they're gonna try and chase him down, run him down the last right click. He managed to get him. DK Phobos running for it with the Echo Slam and slow down Puppy. In chance. Oh no, he stunned up Arteezy from oh, that uh, Lucent Beam. And the Glimmer Cape picked up by Puppy allows him to get out. We was gonna talk about that. The Glimmer Cape in conjunction with the mech will give a lot of team fight possibilities for Secret for some of their squishier heroes like Queen of Pain and Luna. Yeah, at this point, Puppy is just kind of Radiant's using the black hole as a threat more than actually using it. Use it in the early game a few times because you don't want the cooldown up. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of pointless to just hold on to it in the hopes that you get into a five-man fight. Using it for pickoffs is perfectly fine, but in this phase of the game, you're just using the Glimmer Cape. Uh-oh, FNG runs right into S4. God's going to be there. He will have their so turnaround. Bad. They need the Familiars to drop. Global Sound's going to become up as well, and S4 will go down with the help of FNG's nukes. Incredibly important kill will slow down the Queen of Pain, and a plus side that FNG barely survives as well. And that just gives G 800 gold. He's going to go for the Bloodstone right now. And I think this is just in response to the fact that he thinks the Global Silence is enough to lock him down. Also, he's got the Earthshaker with a Blink Dagger nearly completed. And so he just wants to play for the Ultra Late Game. Uh, there can be some repercussions for it if he decides to farm out solo. But this just means that he has to focus on his own jungle. DK Phobos with the Tranquil Boots and Soul Ring build will spend a lot of his time farming up the jungle. He just needs another 400 gold or so, and he will have that Blink Dagger. Very critical for them to continue to shut down Arteezy, as well as pick off the squishier S4 Queen of Pain. Yeah, Arteezy's still incredibly under farm right now. It's hard for him to just static farm in the jungle, or even do the Ancients, because he doesn't have lifesteal or anything like that. They probably need something like a Smoked Roshan, and then drop the Mass Serpent Wards for it for them to be able to get sufficiently ahead. So what I'd like to see right now is them just go for the Roshan uh, as fast as they can, drop the Serpent Wards, and rely on the fact that there's no Global Silence, and that's exactly what they go for. Yeah, but the ward is there. Barely spotted out some of the Team Secret heroes, but it was there. And the smoke up, this could be a prime opportunity for VP. This actually beautiful Fisher block, keeping two away from the Roshan pit. They're kind of separating these heroes, dodging around Puppy as best as possible, and trying to try and pop Kuro. God jumps in, going for that one. Laguna Blade gets laid out. They managed to bring a couple heroes low. God gets away with that Orchid. Oh, there goes FNG, getting blown up by S4's ultimate. Gets Illidan on the side as well as it blinks forward. Now the Black Hole controlling God while they finish up more heroes. Lil managed to get Arteezy towards the end as he's being chased down. God jumps forward ahead of S4, trying to get out of this one but the Malphys is there, stunning him up, uses the Soul Ring for the last bit of jump. There's an Invis room, but he can't quite get there in time. S4 will get the kill, triple for him. In the meantime, Zai brought a little low, but Lil did manage to get away with DK Phobos. And that was just really good team play by Secret. They help each other out for as long as possible. It takes way too long for Crow to die, and I think they just entered the Roche Pit again. They didn't even drop the wards the first time around. is about to respawn in six seconds. This is an easy go for them, and... You have to go for this objective if you're secret. It's just so much safer. Arteezy, you can't just expect him to farm for the next four or five minutes to catch up. You just have to start taking objectives. DK Phobos 
He's already making his way to the Roshan pit. He's so close to that Blink Dagger. He's actually incredibly low. He's at 250 HP. If Roshan hits him once right here, almost getting it. They need just oh, a long range nuke. FNG, he gets it. Lil with the one familiar jumps inside the pit, gets that kill. Now FNG kind of stuck here. Puppy's actually going to be silenced up. Global silence on top of that one. Illidan really wants this kill, but the Glimmer Cape's keeping him alive. Oh, Meanwhile, S4, S4 he's inside the pit against Roshan. Mano a mano, but he's got to blink away. Arteezy, he turns around. He doesn't have the ultimate. No defensive measures. What's here? He gets it's taken out for the sixth time this game in 17 minutes and Roshan down to 2k HP. Team Secret looks like they're just gonna have to give this one up. Oh, this is gonna be so awful if they lose this. G's about to get a Aegis right now. They've, it's so low. It's so hard for them to kill him in the first place. They had to commit so much to it. And VP, I don't know how they did it that second time around, but they managed to sneak, uh, snag the Aegis and the global silence still being up for Illidan, I think, is what gave them so many opportunities. And now they've just got huge upgrades in their next team fight potential. I mean, G having that Aegis, allowing him to be able to jump in and you just murder one person and bounce back up, knowing he has that second life to rely upon. And you also have the Blink Dagger now for DK Phobos with a level 2 Echo Slam on top. Prime opportunity for VP to really take control of this map now. Yeah, Secret just need to build up some sort of net worth on their core heroes. If you're taking a look right now, Arteezy is below the Darkseer net worth. He's just at oh 4k God. at 18 minutes into the game. He's got absolutely nothing, and there's no real prospects for anything either. Like, There's some ancient stacks, but how in the world is he ever going to go for them at this point in the game? Yeah, and then we go back to the fact that Queen of Pain is still, as your mid, yes, you can be a dominant force in the mid game, but ultimately you cannot take that carry role simply because you're too squishy, right? Especially with all the great initiation and lockdown from VP, that Queen of Pain is not going to be a reliable one position. So they have to get RTZ farm somehow, but this is really the best time for VP to get aggressive and try and limit some of the towers on this map. Grouping up right now in the middle lane. Solar Crest already for Lil on top of everything else. Uh, it, talk about a little bit the choices now of Visages. We're seeing this a lot. Completing the Solar Crest instead of going for the earlier Aghanim Scepter. It's just really reliable. It helps so much. The amount of armor that you can... 10 armor, that's pretty ridiculous. It's like a double deso. Mm -hmm. And they're going to smoke for this. This is a really easy move by uh, VP to make. G's got the Aegis. You want to start building up the Bloodstone charges while you can, and they know that Secret are... Fine, Poppy. Really leading it with the Blink Dagger. Glimmer Cape helping him out, but the Dust is there, and Poppy will end up going down. Team Secret, no response from them. They just have to go for sacrificial plays, give up one hero, and try and split push as best as possible, because B uh, VP are really in their prime right now. Yeah, there's almost no way that you want to engage VP in a straight-up fight. G's got an Aegis. Illidan's got his global silence up at this point. Arteezy has nothing. You just have to wait for pickoffs, and it's really going to come down to what S4 can accomplish. Like, he's been brilliant all game. Uh, throughout this tournament, he's had his weak moments, but in this game especially, he's just been dominant. But it's going to be rough, because even with the BKB, the global silence is a threat. They've already got nine Bloodstone charges on the Storm Spirit. You can kind of assume that the Aegis is going to allow him to pick up another one sometime soon. Should they actually 5 man into Tier 2 Towers right now, or is that too risky? You can, but there's still a lot of potential for Secret to win the fights. You don't quite know what everybody from Secret has when it comes to items, right? so it's risky. Fisher just slowing down Kuro's retreat there. We also have a very interesting item choice, Puppy. Went for the Glimmer Cape first, still no BKD, still no Blink Dagger, nothing like the traditional items of an Enigma. He goes for the Vanguard instead, which I'm presuming, I mean, this is going to be built into a Crimson Guard, I guess. Yeah, it's really good against the Visage. There's not a whole lot of right-click physical damage from VP. I right. actually think it makes a lot of sense, and I mean, Puppy's a three-time TI finalist. This one might have questioned that, what he's going to go for in a situation like this, because in my brain, it just makes perfect sense. Well, there goes an Orchid charge. God's not too worried about that one. He's just trying to clean up the creep wave and keep this siege creep alive so they can take the tier two. They used the Orchid already on G. It should be refreshing up soon, but this tier two tower is going to go down. And uh, he actually runs forward. On. Glimmer Cape, they do have the dust to be able to reveal him, and they're just staying at a distance. I love this. They surround Puppy, but make sure that they're not going to group up too much for a black hole because there is always the danger of Zai counter-initiating at that point with a vacuum, and then you're getting a three or four-man black hole. That could be the whole entire fight right there. 
everybody from VP is just playing so safe right now. They just kind of surrounded him and made sure that G was in the front with the Aegis. So Secret didn't want to hard commit because you don't want to fight into a Storm who suddenly has a refreshed mana pool. So you've just got to wait that out. And I think their timing is wait for RTZ to get his BKB, which he's kind of close to, and then just go for it. At this point, the late game is not in your favor whatsoever. Lil's going to start building towards that Aghanim Scepter. We also have an Orchid being built now by G. Especially with the lack of BKBs. I mean, Narteezy's going to try and build one now. He already has the Ogre Club. But Darkseer doesn't typically build a BKB, at least not very early on. Luna's going to be forced into a rush, but she's already so far behind. And then S4, well, he's already has his. Oh, they're actually moving in for DK4. S4 right now. Oh, he's got the Echo Slam. They have the instant shot. They're going to chain lock him down. Laguna Blade, Fisher, everything being blown for such a critical pickoff. And that's what I mean. That's 502 gold going their way. You don't want that much net worth on a Queen of Pain. It's just so easy to kill, and we're seeing that demonstrated right now. No time to respond with the BKB whatsoever. She is level 15, he still has a ton of farm, but he just needs some form of backup when it comes to net worth. You've got Puppy, who's the second highest in your team. That's definitely not what you want to see if you're a Secret fan. He's got a Vanguard and a Glimmer Cape, items that don't necessarily win you team fights. DK Phobos. He's actually building for a Yule Scepter now. Um, the most obvious use of that would be able to self-use it in order to get rid of the Orchid Silence. Do you really think DK Phobos is going to be that much of a target from S4's Orchid? I think part of it too is that he notices that Puppy's not going for B the BKB, so it's an easy way for him to stop the Black Hole as well. Okay. Like you're just giving yourself as many ways as you can to win the fight. Right. FNG's got a Yule Scepter of his own, so... Multiple Cyclones are going to be coming out from the Virtus Pro team. They still haven't taken the bottom Tier 1 and Tier 2 towers. And they didn't really make a whole lot of use of that Aegis, just simply taking the Tier 2 mid. Virtus Pro are giving a lot of respect to Team Secret, but is it too much? Are they playing perhaps a little bit too passive? No, not at all. RTZ still has nothing. Um, they can decide to just drag this game out for a little bit longer. There's no reason for them to have to rush it. You wait for the Storm's next item, fair minimum, before you go for anything, and your team still has a lot of room to grow. It's not as if they've struggled to find items. Like, uh, Illidan can decide to go for a Hect pretty soon at some point, or even Lincoln's to help the Storm out further. You can see G go for that Orc before you decide to go for the push. You feel like you have an advantage, so you probably go for the Tier 2, but there's no reason to jump into the Tier one and tier two bottom yet. Bottom All right, the tier two easily going to be taken by Virtus Pro. Secret are doing something similar here at the bottom lane. A straight up trade off, but the glyph advantage is there for Virtus Pro. Yeah, they want to actually force Team Secret back to the base right now. And if Secret stick around to try and take that tier two tower, which they are, that means free damage on the tier three. They don't have glyph either. This makes it incredibly hard for them to hold. It's taking a lot of damage right now, and Secret are going to filter in one by one, but VP are forcing them back. Puppy actually surged up, hoping to be able to catch somebody, but Virtus Pro, once again, very disciplined play. Love the trade-off there. They weren't going to TP back in time to save that Tier 2 power. It would have been a very dangerous fight, so instead they just push into the Tier 3. Not over-committing, though. Just take it down to about half HP and backing up before Secret can catch him. What Secret are going to need this game is for... Their Darkseer to get a Blink Dagger, uh, Blink in and initiate, and then catch two or three heroes with the Vacuum right. as Puppy walks in simultaneously with the Black Hole. And he has to get the Silencer and the Earthshaker bare minimum. He almost has to get like, all five heroes in this game to be able to get his Black Hole off. It's going to be incredibly hard, but if there's any team in the world that I think can do it, uh, the combination between Zai and Puppy is really strong. Yeah, the reason you're saying that he kind of needs to catch all five, right, is because there's disables on every single one of the heroes of Virtus Pro, especially with those, you know, instant reaction Yule Scepters available. Um, this all comes back to the part where Puppy chose to go for the Crimson Guard over the BKB. Yeah, and I think it's still an okay decision. It means that Secret are going to outlast them in a the fight, is what they're hoping for. Yeah. Like, you can outlast them during the Global Silence, but it does mean that Secret have to position themselves nearly perfectly when it comes to the Earthshaker Echo Slam. Mm -hmm. But they've got a lot of different ways to win fights. Like two BKBs with the Crimson Guard on you at the same time, it's going to be incredibly hard for VP to deal damage. And this is why Team Secret are actually going to go for a smoke up here and enter into the Virtus Pro jungle. Team Secret 
We're hoping to be able to catch somebody really important here. Odd would be a prime target, but he's actually, it seems like Virtus Pro may know, as God's just sitting there with his remnant, waiting for a smoke to pop with that flying vision. Yeah, there's no reason for them to have to split up. They know if the, there's nobody at that top lane, nobody in that mid lane. This is 100% them in the jungle, and she's going to spot this right now. Yeah, they do have vision. They're going to start moving forward. He actually jumps to the background, going straight for Puppy. No chance for a black hole, but they do get a vacuum sonic wave combination that already takes out Illidan. Huge kill there, and now the black hole is still there to be able to control God. S4 comes back for that double, and now Team Secret have found their opening. They're going to try and clean up more, but no one else from VP is around. Oh, they're going to lose their courier at the same time. Oh, wow. Didn't have anything on it, but it's still a big time pickoff. They blew a lot and won't be able to, to go straight for the Roshan pit. But it is up. It's something that Virtus Pro have to keep in mind in some of these fights. I love the, the choices there by Team Secret to go for Illidan with the Orchid first, knowing that he doesn't have a BKB to be able to defend himself. They just essentially blow him up right away, and there's no global silence, which means that Puppy, with the, this Glimmer Cape and, and Crimson Guard build, was able to survive through the initiation of God, as you said, and was still able to get off the, B, uh, the, the black hole after the Orchid faded. Yeah, the Crimson Guard made it so that almost nobody on VP did any damage during the BKB timers. Uh, the Glimmer Cape did the same. And VP, they need to keep Illidan alive really badly. He's really struggling to stay alive in that loss site, but it's no. really paramount that they get the global talents off. Yeah, they don't have defensive supports. They don't even have any defensive items such as Glim Cape, so it's it's not like they can actually do anything themselves to keep Illidan alive. And so the most important thing is that they always get the initiation on Team Secret. They're always the ones jumping first, so Illidan isn't immediately countered by S4. Kuro's oh, gonna be grabbed here by God, but there goes the Glimmer Cape, and he does not have the vision. They go back inside the Roshan pit, but Team Secret very clearly know what's going on. Yeah, and I don't think they want to defend this. S4 is a little bit further away, and they don't have vision in that Roche pit. They don't have the best ways of checking either. So you just give it up. She's got the Aegis again, and this is going to set up a timing where I think v VP do want to get aggressive. They got to make good use of this Aegis, because right now that team net worth advantage is minimal for both sides in experience and gold. So Virtus Pro need to start establishing some dominance now. Before Arteezy is able to catch back up, he's got the BKP, Helmet Dominator. His farm is growing slowly but surely. Yeah. He's just naturally going to farm faster than heroes like the Silencer. The Luna, like you said, actually catches up. He's got a Helmet on BKB, but that's still kind of bad when it comes to damage. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Secret of Prioritize over damage is just outlasting their opponents more than anything. Uh-oh, Illidan oh, is going to be so caught bad. here. He can't he actually TP out because there is going to be a vacuum to bring him back into that wall. S4 lets loose the ultimate now and catches three in the process. They almost brought down FNG at the same time. Huge kill. The carry of Virtus Pro down for a full minute. And prime opportunity for Team Secret to push forward and start taking some farm. Arteezy already grabbing as much as he can in the enemy jungle will now back up to that bottom lane, which is pushing in. I mean, S4 is just dominating this game right now. BP, they can't afford to leave their base by themselves in this situation because I mean, S4 will hunt you down every single time. A combination of the ion shell where he slows you and is able to blink on top of you, does a ton of damage, you can't fight back into it. This almost reads to me that the Silencer has to get a Hex as fast as he can or even something like a Yule Scepter, because even with the Hex, I think he would struggle to stay alive against the Queen of Pain who just BKBs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to grab one right now. He's really close to it, just 700 gold off. And with that timing, I think they just go for the 2-2 bottom, maybe even smoke up, and just try to end the game. But even their high ground is kind of bad. Storm Spirit plus Silencer aren't the heroes that you necessarily want to be on the high ground. You want them to counter-initiate, so it's going to be up to Lil getting an Aghanim Scepter, so he has three birds to be able to go for safe tower pushes. Right. Otherwise, you have to go for a gank beforehand. What about our Storm Spirit? He's got 2,300 gold right now. He still is going to have issues with the black hole. Does he go for BKB? Uh, no. I think that the black hole is something you can't really play for, especially if you have a BKB, it doesn't matter. Right. Going for a hex of your own is probably one of the better bets, just so you can get the hex off on Puppy before he gets his Crimson Guard off. So, double set device potentially for VP. 
We see S4 now building into that sort of uh, carrier Queen of Pain. Going the right click damage builds Orchid, EKB, and now an Assault Kuros. VP's team is going to be so hard, or Secret's team, sorry, is going to be so hard to fight into. You've got an Assault Kuros and a Crimson Guard with a mech. Actually, Guardian Greaves. That team is just tanky. No, it's going to be nearly impossible to cut through that with the physical damage that VP currently have. Right. Like, you need their Lina to pretty much become a core at this point. And she is kind of on her way. FNG has Yule Scepter, Point Booster, and another 2,000 gold to start building into the X. Okay, so the hex is completed. You probably just take control right now with the gem and then go for a kill. Like, the Aegis is going to fade relatively soon. They have to make something happen on the map. Team Secret definitely know this, though. I mean, they're sitting so passively here in the middle lane. Uh, same goes with bottom. S4 and Zai are essentially waiting for someone to show up. And if no one does, they'll start pressuring that tier 3. The issue is that VP don't want to leave this mid area, but at the same time, you can't ignore what's happening at bottom. Yeah. You don't want to waste the Aegis. And nail it in. There it is. Jump in. RTZ are going to be able to grab him instantly. Hexed up, though, and be in some serious trouble. He's trying to get rid of that Aegis. The Global Silence has popped. And G will actually jump himself away. VP maybe waiting for the counter initiation. RTZ came forward, lost his BKB. They're going to try to chain stun him down. Zai's actually been hit. And there goes immediately. The black hole's gone. RTZ couldn't even get off his ultimate. DK oh, Bubbles left to S4. They've already taken two. Can they get more? FNG gets popped by S4, but S4 is being controlled by G. He gets taken out. God, Bumpy, he's going to be able to get away. No, he couldn't TP out in time. Elden, he's going to go down to the right clicks of the illusions from the wall. Sadly, the carry of Virtus Pro falls, but it's still a great fight for VP. Yeah, they get G to neutral, Bloodstone charges. They get a lot of kills out of that. I mean, looking at the fight recap, it's almost a 2K, 2.5K net worth swing, and it's only Kuro right now that's at top lane to defend that. You wasted a BKB charge from Artur. He didn't get his ultimate off, and they do have buybacks, but you want to force those at this point. Yeah, one of the best things about winning that fight for VP was that it was right in front of Team Secret's base, and you can go immediately to pushing down these tier 3 towers. Orchid it up, Kuro just charges right in there. There's the vacuum, but Kuro still can be popped by this Orchid, and G has enough mana to be able to jump out if he needs to. He wants the tier 3 tower first. In fact, he might want Zai as well. Oh, no! They've actually lost two. G immediately TPs out. Lil to follow him. Arteez, couldn't get there in time for the Lucent Beam to stop that TP out. So, 23-18, Virtus Pro. They need this win in game number two to stay alive in the international. And they do get a gigantic objective in that tier three at the top lane. Yeah, Elodin having that hex allowed him to deal so much damage. He just cut through his eyes so quickly, was able to hex him up, unable to do anything after that point. DK Phobos has all the mobility items in the world. Your Storm Spirit has a full BKB now. And this is going to allow him to not get hexed up during the Shadow Shaman timing. I would have still liked to see the Hex, but I think in this time in particular, they know that Puppy doesn't have the Black Hole. Yep. So going for the BKP is fine here. That means that VP just go for it right now. No waiting. Virtus Pro already charging down that middle lane. Not waiting out another Aegis. They actually do have... Is that the complete? Yep. Complete Aghanim Scepter for FNG. And he almost has level 3 Laguna Blade on top of that. Secret. How many buybacks do they actually have? I think it's only the Enigma. Yeah, it's only the Enigma. Everybody else yeah. bought out. Um, S4, S4 will have his. He's, he's only missing 100 gold for it, so he should be able to get a three-man packing. Nice wall on top of that. Sonic Wave goes off, but VP are still taking enough to survive through this. Illidan will drop a little low thanks to that Orchid, but he's still able to get out. Secret desperately need to try and chase down these heroes, but they can't overextend. VP are ready for a response attack. Now they've got S4. Yule Scepter, Light Strike Array, trying to burst him down as fast as possible. S4 does go down. He does not have the buyback. There goes DK Phobos. Echo Saibon 2. Trying to pop our TZ to get Poppy as well. Skurro's now going to be caught on top of Light Strike Array. And Team Secret may have just fallen apart in this team fight as they don't get anybody out of VP. Poppy's already bought back. Zai going to be able to get another three man vacuum, but Poppy's left down by these familiars. He turns around, but God searches for with the Fisher on top. They will be able to get this kill. Crimson Guard, damn, but they're all low. Zai has to make a big play right here. He managed to pick up one already. But Zai gonna get turned around up by the three. A Furnace Pro triple kill. Team Secret get wiped inside of their own base. And nobody from Secret at this point have a buyback. They're just gonna have to wait this out. 59 gold remains for that Queen of Pain buyback. 
VP don't have the strongest tower hitting team, so they have to get a lot out of this right now. They might just be able to go for a double set of racks. You, even if you just walk away with range barracks at this point, it's well worth it for them as this is going to mean a lot in terms of net worth. After that fight alone, they're up 10k. They're going to get this tier 3 tower minimum. The tower's going to follow, and S4 is not going to buy back, so this is probably going to mean double racks. Team Secret, two racks down by 37 minutes. It's rather early on into the game. Verdes Pro has so many items to pick up once they go back to base. Team Secret actually hoping to be able to catch somebody here with S4 jumping forward. Popping the BKB going straight for Illidan, but there goes that Aghanim Scepter. S4 has actually dropped a little low. God turns around instead of going for S4, he wants to pick up Kuro. Make sure there's no disables there and does get Marteze chasing down FNG, but he couldn't even get that much. Now slowed down by the Rod of Atos inside the vice. They're going to try and get the damage necessary. DK Fobos turns on S4, Yule Scepter there, and Familiar, he needs it. 11 HP, can't quite get it, but Marteze, he's fighting up against DK Fobos who makes a quick retreat with the oh, Blink Dagger. S4, for this. this is dangerous. If he wants it, he's got to play it perfectly. And he does decide to back himself away. They killed Illidan and only lost Kuro for it. So they got something, but it's still two racks down. I mean, they didn't get enough out of the retreat for Team Secret to really get themselves back into this game. The Storm Spirit has a fully completed Shiva's Guard if he wants, almost a fully completed Hex. He's gonna go for that, 17 Bloodstone charges. You've got level three ultimate on FNG with that Aghanim Scepter. Uh, you saw the Queen of Pain blink in, get Aghanim Scepter zapped by that Laguna Blade, mm -hmm. instantly had to fall back. They can't really stop G anymore, and they need the BKB on Puppy to be able to succeed in a fight for once. This tier two tower bottom is even real low. And even if Team Secret can hold Arteezy choosing to go for the S and Y, that's very much an item that is worth something right now, but will not be worth that much later on into the game. This is very much focused on just staying alive. This will definitely slow down the carry potential of Arteezy for now. VP are just going to collect their next round of items, it seems. He is actually only 20 gold away from his Scythe of Vice that we talked about. And Illidan completed the oh, BKB, they're run never into mind. Each other. They're actually going to go for this one, smoked up Team Secret. This is going to be the end here. Jump in, already grabbing Puppy, orking it up. They're going to try and burst him down. No black hole opportunities, but he gets away with the Glimmer Cave. Now the Global Sound's good. Slay down, Curl's going to fall to God. And Arteezy gets zapped by FNG, who turns around and gets the Light Strike Array. They chase Stun down S4. Now Illidan, he's going to be able to fight up against Arteezy as well. Picks up that kill, GG! Furnace Pro will take game number two and keep their hopes alive in this tournament. Just masterfully played by them. That Roche pit, uh, Roche pit fight where they were able to keep things going, to get the Aegis multiple times on G, just outplaying Secret when it mattered. And, I mean, that was about as close as it gets. That top fight cemented things for them, but Virtus Pro well played, and this was a team victory. There was no real stand.